Everyone tired of Donald Trump loyalists shielding him from legal consequences should give Representative Stacey Pleskett a round of applause for boldly calling out Jim Jordan. Pleskett tore into Jordan for holding a hearing in defense of Trump as he faces dozens of criminal charges at Wednesday's House Judiciary Committee hearing on government weaponization. Pleskett confronted the clear partisan agenda of the committee chaired by Jordan and exposed the attempts to protect Donald Trump from accountability for his actions, especially after Michael Cohen's bombshell testimony implicating Trump in the hush money scheme. Listen to how the hearing backfires right in Jordan's face. He's like Natalie Winters, a Trump loyalist and an executive producer for Steve Bannon's show, have been mocking Chairman Jordan's leadership of the committee openly. As you can see up there, when the House Judiciary tweeted, imagine actually believing Michael Cohen, she retweeted and said, imagine actually believing at GOP, at Judiciary GOP will do anything about it. Just as one example on Monday, she put that, that tweet up and then Fox's Marie, Maria Bartiroma and Steve Bannon himself have gotten into the act, and here they are. Why aren't you being louder about this? Why aren't I hearing anything from this committee? I had to just ask you about it, okay? We are, just let me be clear. Viewers are sick and tired of hearings. They're sick and tired of letters. They're sick and tired of hearing complaints. They want action. President Trump is in a trial all day long, every day in New York City. Where is this committee of weaponization and what are you doing about it? I just spoke with Kevin Hassett, the former chairman of the White House Economics Council, and he said, make no mistake, if we see President Trump go to jail because he violated this gag order, Markets will react. Okay, Congressman, we're losing the country. So with all due respect, I'm not blaming you specifically, but it's not enough to set up a committee that's called the weaponization of federal government. That's not doing it for anybody. We want to hear more from you. We want to hear action. We want to know what the heck is going on in this New York trial where nobody can seem to come up with a crime. Well, I'll tell you what I'm specifically doing. Okay, okay, okay. No, I don't need to hear. I don't need to hear a backbencher. I'm sure you're a good guy. I'm sure you're trying to do a lot, but it's not as Maria Bartiroma says. And man, she lit him up. We all heard her. It's not enough to set up a committee just called the weaponization of the federal government. That's not doing it. We want action, and that's why we're here today. We're here at the beck and call. Of Trump fanatics. As if that wasn't embarrassing already, Jim Jordan Republican witnesses go on to make his case even worse. Listen, when somebody tells you who they are, believe them. And if we're talking about Donald J. Trump, well, he has showed us time and time again that he is corrupt, self-serving, and authoritarian. But no matter how far Trump goes with his outlandish remarks and actions, his loyalists continue to deflect attention from the underlying dangers by consistently downplaying them every single time. Uh, that's not all that's been said. Uh, if we were to go through the various statements, on day one, I will be a dictator. Is that an appropriate thing for an American president to, to be or even to say he would be? Anybody want to answer that question? It is inappropriate. Mr. Hamilton. Appropriate or inappropriate for you a You didn't want to hear me a second ago, so why are you asking me now? <laughs> I'll answer it's humorous. I don't think the guy actually thinks he's exactly. about to be a dictator. Exactly. So you think it's inappropriate to say that? No, it's humorous. I like humor. Do you like dictators? <laughs> it's not an issue. Really? He served for four years as president. I don't remember a dictatorship breaking out. Time of the gentleman. No, we're talking about the time of the gentleman has expired. Mr. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. Donald Trump unmistakably gives off dictator vibes. An example that epitomizes this, January 6th, when Trump encouraged a mob to storm the U.S. Capitol in an attempt to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. That type of behavior mirrors typical dictator tendencies in several aspects. The assault on a symbol of democracy, the endeavor to subvert an election, the reliance on coercion and intimidation, the blatant disregard for the rule of law, 
in the propagation of unfounded narratives. The spread of misinformation and conspiracy theories before and after the riot worsened the situation and further divided the nation. While Donald Trump continues to thrive off of the unwavering support of his loyalists, it is time for them to recognize the harm caused by enabling his authoritarian behavior. Instead of being enablers, it is time for these supporters to demand accountability and responsible leadership. By shifting their stance from blind loyalty to a call for accountability, Trump's loyalists have the opportunity to play a crucial role in upholding the integrity of our democratic institutions and promoting a more inclusive and responsible form of governance.